we are back. Guess who's back? We're back again. <laughs> Mama's knowledge. back. We're back. We're talking bunkers today. And I believe I was talking about the golf club, the function of the leading edge and the back edge, edge here and how, you know, people talk about using the bounce. It's really this area here. Um, and uh, what it does, it, it makes the club skip or maybe you can call it bounce. Bounce in the sand. I have a great drill for you to see in a little bit how it's supposed to look, how it's supposed to feel, so you can kind of imagine that. But really, bounce the club in the sand. And if you really think about it, it's it's the only shot where you don't need to hit the ball first. We're talking bunker green side shots where you have the sand lift the ball, not so much um, you hitting the ball directly. So again, we talked about people are scared. They get in the bunker. They have no confidence. They rush their shots. They hit it thin, they might hit it fat, meaning they hit way behind the ball. And I see a lot of people just decelerating, just hitting straight down and then a stop and then, then they pray that the ball will go up uh, somewhere close to the hole. So a few things to think about. Now you know the fundamentals of the golf club and I'm just gonna kinda s s show you the, the basic setup. Get a wide stance, it's important to have a solid wide stance. The reason why you want to have a solid wide stance is you really don't want to use your legs here. You know, it's more of an upper body swinging with your shoulders, rotating and get the, you know, the ball up in the air. And again, it's a little sliding. <laughs> Are you steady over there? <laughs> I slid in the sand. Like I said, you need a solid foundation to hold the camera steady <laughs> and to hold the golf club. So, a solid stance like this, a wide stance. I like to put the ball position more forward in the stance because I like to hit the ball high and softly. You want to make sure that you open the club face. And this could be a little tricky because when you talk about opening the club face, a lot of people do, they take the normal grip like this, I don't know if you can see, like this, and then they open and they go like this. Well, where in the world is this club face pointing? Well, it's pointing way to the right. So a little tip all you need to do is you grab it and, you know, if you're a right-handed golfer like I am, Put the club more and open it up and then take the grip. So it should look something like this. My normal grip is open, my normal grip is here, and then you see the club face open. I don't know if I confused you there, but I'm sorry if I did. But really the idea is don't take your normal grip and then open. Because what happens when you swing down, when you come into impact, your grip gets normal and now your club face is shut. And when you have a shut club face, two things happen. The ball goes really low a lot of times it doesn't even get up out of the bunker and number two is you just dig because now you got your leading edge coming into the bunker first and that's not what we want we want the back edge the trailing uh, the trailing edge to come in first so again open up the club face you know I take it in my right hand like this and then take my normal setup a little wider and you are allowed to feel the sand with the feet that's why you see a lot of professional do this kind of move, this little dance move. It's not just to get a good solid foundation, it's also to feel the consistency of the sand. So take advantage of that because you can't ground the club, we all know that. That's uh, golf 101, you're not allowed to ground the club. So, but having said that, now I did that, now we can move into this drill. The drill is to show you where you really should be coming in to the ball. So I'm gonna draw a little line here, and this is where I wanna come in I don't know if you can see if Mike can handle the camera this closely, but you're gonna come in about an inch or so behind the ball, and then when the leading edge come in, you come under, the sand lifts the ball, and it lands beautifully on the green. Okay, so now you know where to go in, ball position more forward, open up the stance, and stay with me, there's just a few more things, and then really, that's all you need to focus on. But I like to get down a little bit, bend your knees because you wanna make sure that the knees are down and hands are low. You don't wanna stand up here. You wanna be down here. Hands more towards the knees, a little below your hip. And then from here, the key is to have some speed. Speed gets the ball up in the air and speed makes it also stop. A lot of people swing in slow motion and really you get nowhere. And when you swing in slow motion, again, the leading edge will hit it. So I'm gonna give it a try. You guys ready? Raise your hand if you're ready. Well, I'm ready. So let's go. There we go. <laughs> that was 
Typical Annika. But also, uh, maybe I was listening to my own tips. If you practice, <laughs> you can do this also. Yes, that was, um, I'm not really sure how to follow that up. But um, I do want to talk about those two different drills that I mentioned that might help you make your first shot. So, hang on a minute, I have a little distraction over here. Yes, say hi to all the viewers. Can you do a TikTok? You do any game. Why? All right. Oh, thank you. Look out, guys. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. So you can do it. Next one, mommy makes. We are back in the bunker, and we talked about using the bounce, using the you know the trailing edge to help you. This is really a cool, cool thing you can do if you don't have a bunker uh, in, in nearby. But if you have a rake or just something you can do, sit up again, knees down the hand slow and then really feel like the club is bouncing it's skipping through the grass make sure when you swing you follow through you know you get the right hand literally open because you do not want to turn the wrist with the hands over but it's bounce bounce i really love this drill because you can see it you can hear it and also you can feel it so if you really don't understand what, what does really bounce mean and if you look at the club closely my trailing edge is being hit first don't worry I will clean it up so what you can do you can alternate from the rake and then to the sand and just feel how the club is going through the sand okay I know I have done this a few times and I might make it sound really easy but if you practice and you know the basics you can do it too okay one more thing I like to do before we maybe op open up for questions is when I hit this divot, remember we talked about hitting it about an inch before the ball, but if you swing, I don't know if you can see the divot, if Mike will zoom in for me quickly, it should be the size of a dollar bill. I found it a $10 bill, but I think the size is the same, aren't they? So there we go. So I really feel like they have the size of, well, they do call it the money shot, right? The money shot. But it's the size of a dollar bill because you don't want it to be really, really big and really, really deep. This is a good visual of how big the divot should be. So what do you think, Mike? Do we have any questions? Something I need to... Well, wants oh. his money back. Oh, that's your weekly allowance. <laughs> okay. What do we... Uh, all right, why don't you hit a couple more. Okay. And then we'll open it up for some questions. Okay, I'm just going to rake this up. Use my foot. Okay, again, practice the things I talked about. Actually, it's good that you have the camera from, from the back so you can see that my body is pointed a little bit to the left, meaning my head, my shoulders, and my feet are to the left of the body because we always swing along the body line. So my club head will be, even though I said open, actually I should clarify that too, so it's good that if I'm, are you moving all, I'm thinking about these things. When you open the club face, Here it to means help, that you are giving it more loft. I'm not necessarily always opening to the right, so I'm going to open it up to the, you can see wheel there, my body's to the left, and swing through. Okay? Again, here we have a shot where the hole is literally just, you know, behind the edge of the green. Keep working yeah. on the shots. One question is, how do you adjust when you have a big lip in front of you? How you adjust a big lip? Well, that's the key there is same basics. Move the ball maybe a little bit more forward so you really hit the ball high. Some players I've seen like to really swing a little higher, but I have the setup, same. Open up the club face a little bit more and make sure you get some speed. The more speed, the higher the ball will go. I remember you said uh, practicing with Tiger years ago when you guys were both at your peak 
um, he was hitting shots and he kept telling you, you need speed, you need speed. You wanna share that story? Yeah, well, you, that, that's kinda, of, that is the story. And I kept trying to hit harder. And Tiger kept saying, no, I don't want you to hit harder. Just speed, get the club to move faster. Meaning again, getting some speed will get the ball up in the air and it will sit a little closer. So I really had to accelerate my swing. But also make sure when you accelerate your swing, when you swing down here, when you come in, especially with the right, is to keep this club face, keep it open. I don't know if you can see, but you should really be able to put a glass or a cup on this when you finish so that you don't swing through. I'm gonna do a little bit in slow motion, but the club head is closing and then you get something like this that you might see on a normal golf swing. You make sure that you keep the face open. And if you keep the face open, you can really swing with a lot of speed. And hopefully it stops nicely. <laughs> okay? Good shot. Um, another question was, how do you hit out of wet sand? Wet sand. Which is what we have here today yeah. on a nice, cool, cloudy Ohio fall football day, I would call it, here in Orlando. Well, when, when it's wet, most likely it would look something like this more packed um, I actually prefer packed because it's I find the club easier to bounce um, and uh, I don't feel like I have that fluff of sand that you never know how fluffy it is uh, if you feel like it's really really hard uh, pan I would move the ball a little bit more in the center of on my stands and you don't have to open it up so much very good so give that a try and another thing we might talk about while we is, you know, I've been hitting from flat lice, you know, always giving myself good lice. We don't always have good lice. You know, sometimes you might be, I mean, we've all seen the dreaded fried egg. Fried egg. I prefer that in the mornings <laughs> than I do here. <laughs> but it does happen when the ball comes in and you come in and soft sand. Especially in new, you know, when you have new sand in the courses. So there are different ways to uh, hit this type of shot. Let's take this flag over here. What I like to do is make sure I don't open up the club face this time. I really want to have more of my leading edge come through. And it's more of a pop because when you hit down on it, the ball will hit the sand and will kind of pop. But you have to understand that the ball will not spin as much as you know a normal bunker shot because there's a lot of sand in front. I grip down a little bit on my club and I take it back, you know, really steep, just using the wrist a lot. Don't be afraid to use the wrist in bunkers. Um, I like because it's easier to get the club up a little sooner, a lot steeper, and boom. Again, Shut. you can see how it just releases, but I think, you know, when you go into a bunker, you have to lower your expectations and make sure that the ball releases. <laughs> Another one we can talk about is, I don't know if you can see this, Mike, is when we, uh, you're standing more on a, we, you know, we talked about flat lice, and now, you know, we're getting into bunker 202, where you have, you know, a little more, not severe lice, but it's not flat. You know, the adjustments you do to uphills, downhills, etc. And I just want to say, just in general, whether I was in the bunker or in the fairway or in the rough, is you always want to stand with the slope. So, do you think you can see the slope? I can feel the slope. I don't know if you can see the slope, but you know, this left leg is higher than than my right. But you know, on a, on a flat lie, we like to have you know, you always stay kind of flat, 50-50. Um, here, when you have a sloping life like this you want to make sure you have the weight more on your right side because you're swinging with the slope I see a lot of people they try to somehow compensate they some they try to somehow make this you know make the lie flat so they put a ton of weight on the front and they're leaning into here but what happened if I do this I'm literally just gonna hit it straight into the hill so don't be afraid again even if this is on the fairway always stand with the slope meaning have more weight on this one so it would look something like this more weight on the right and swing through coming through okay 
shot. And of course, if we do the opposite, if I have a downhill lie, oh. it would be the other way around. So, just a few things to think about. You want to hit one this way, show downhill? Yeah, we can do it downhill. There's a very slopey lie. Okay, guys. Space. Space, please. Six feet for the So here we go. Slope is this way. Now my right leg is higher than the left. So I want to make sure that I have more weight on my left leg and when I swing through. And again, when I swing through this way, the ball is not going to get as high because obviously when it's slope like this, the club is, is more on its down, on its way down and coming down lower. So expectations here are the same thing. They're going to release a little bit. So weight on my left, swing through. With a Gary Player walkthrough. Yes, that is correct. How about a plug lie in the back of the bunker coming this way? <laughs> now this, this actually was a question, but I do have a feeling they wanted to see you hit the shot. I know. This is all... yeah, I got one. Come on. Come on. Come on. This is probably one of the hardest shots, other than maybe a forty-yard oh, shot. I thought this was a little. Okay. I mean, that's extreme. If you have it like this, what I would do is take an unplayable. <laughs> this is a shot that I would do. But even this is a tough well. one. This is a tough one because in this case, I got one foot outside and one in and you want to make sure that you absolutely hit as closest to the ball possible because if you have a lot of weight again on your back leg what's going to happen is most likely you will hit here and the club will bounce through it and we don't make any contact at all so have some weight on your front leg i would close my club face a little bit close again de lofted so that the leading edge is coming in think of it as a more of a sharp entry than this soft bounce that we normally do and it will release so I'm gonna give it a try and we go from there off and off. shot yeah I take it it's again there some shots are just very difficult and I think again the expectations of getting on the green is is better on some areas but then when you have proper easy lies then you can say okay I'm gonna get it close so hopefully those are a few uh, tips that can help you to get out of the bunker giving you some confidence just knowing the basics and again don't feel like you have to stress when you get into a bunker a lot of people hurry they make a short swing and then it's just boom I want to get out this as quick as possible go in there feel confident think about oh I don't have to hit the ball first and let the club do the work by you using your shoulders. How about the British Open style pot bunkers? Yes, those are fun. <laughs> what are the tricks for those? Well, first of all, they're probably a third. Maybe over here, maybe in the Yeah, they're face. probably a third of the size of this bunker, and this is not a big bunker. They, you, you very seldom have a flat lie there. You will have this lie, this lie. Um, I've been in a few of those. As a matter of fact, when I played the British Open there in 2003, um, at uh, them. St. Dan's, I think there was over 170 bunkers. So um, it was very difficult. Uh, a few times you even have to hit it backwards because the lip is so high that it's better to play backwards. So you need to have a strategy, but if you are in one of those, again, the fundamentals do not change. Same grip, same setup, ball position forward and swing through. Okay. okay? Any other questions out there, guys? You want to hit a couple more? Yep, I hit a few more and then. Another make. Ooh. So. Do you always use your sand wedge out of bunkers? Again, it depends on your lie and the distance. I actually brought uh, a few other clubs with me here. The one I've been hitting is my lob wedge, my 60 degree. Uh, this one, if you can see. It says 58, is it 58 or 60? It's 60, it's actually been bent to be 60. Uh, 54 and then 48. So 
if I have a longer bunker shot. Show these nice Callaway wedges that Anthony Toronto designed. Designed, yeah, it's pretty. Nice little A on there. 59 on there for her. Thank you, Callaway. Thank you. It's, it's not my age yet, so even though I'm hitting, I'm getting to <coughs> minus 10. Oh. I, the big number later this fall, but not yet. Uh, but going back to the question about using other clubs, if the distance is further, if I have a lot of green to work with, absolutely change clubs. Use a 54, same type idea. If you do the same technique, it would just go very similar, but just to, you know, fly a little further, the same thing with the 48. I've even used the 9 iron in the bunker where the lip was not very high, just to make sure that I get over the lip and then it would release. Again, maybe going back to link stack golf courses where you could have a 30, 40, maybe in a 50 yard bunker shot, green side bunker. So there's nothing wrong uh, of trying those things out. As a matter of fact, uh, that makes me think about the bunker shot, probably one of the greatest bunker shots I've ever hit at the Skins game on the ninth. Oh, uh, you gotta Google that one, folks. Yeah, that was, uh, I won some Skins. I made an eagle on the ninth hole against Phil Mickelson and, and the crew. Uh, I remember- you Finished second, that made you finish second, I think. In the end, yeah. But uh, on that particular hole, I won some skins over the boys. So that was fun. Uh, one of those shots that you just like, don't ask me to hit again, but it was perfect when you when I did hit it. So, uh, and also, I thought, actually, I thought of another story, Mike. When I was playing in uh, in Tucson. Coach was, Taylor, Shauna joined, hello. Hello. I was thinking about uh, Circle K, was the name, Circle K Ping Championship in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, we played. Randolph North, it's a, it's a public course, but it was kind of the home course for us uh, college players. And I played there my first LPGA event. And we get to the last hole, this is Randolph North. Par five, uh, going for the green and two in regulation. This is the 72nd hole. I am in first place and really feel comfortable about this hole. It's, again, can go for it in two, it's easy. It's an easy birdie hole. But what happened is I hit my second shot over the green into a green sign bunker and I have always been I mean many of you knows I've, I've been keeping track of all my scores uh, doing statistics for, for years so I know exactly you know how many putts I would have you know my fairway hits and and of course bunker saves and up and downs but I always told my coach I why should I practice bunkers I'm never in a bunker literally I might have been in a bunker once or twice in a tournament so I really didn't spend a lot of time working on my bunker shots because I wanted to be better at other things. I know that sounds a little funny, but I figured why spend on time on, on shots that I never hit? Well, that Sunday, the 72nd hole, I hit it in the bunker and all I had to do was up and down to win the tournament. Well, I hit a decent bunker shot to about 10 feet, missed the putt and made par and Rachel Heddington, Rachel Teske, uh, was was another uh, I think it was, that was her married name uh, she birded the last hole and we ended up tying for first and uh, we had to go obviously playoff sudden hole sudden death hole and number 18 again hit a good drive we both hit in the middle of the fairway we both go for the green and two and funny enough we both of us end up in the same bunker behind the bunker that had been in recent and just you know 15 minutes before that and now it becomes a bunker challenge uh, I hit a better shot than in regulation. I believe I hit it to you know eight or six feet. Well, Rachel hit a superb shot, just to three or four feet. I ended up missing my putt, so I made par. Rachel made her, and she ended up winning. You can imagine I walked away from that tournament very disappointed in myself and told my coach at the time, where is the nearest bunker? I need to work on my bunker shots. So stubbornness is not always a good thing, but you learn from your mistakes, and I hope that these tips have helped you and that next time you get on the golf course and uh, you can improve some of your shots. So. We've, we've been asked about a long, like a 40 yard bunker shot. Do you want to try one from the volleyball court or do you want to hit one maybe that way? Or? I can hit here to the volleyball court. Okay. Okay. There you are, guys. I'm going to grab my 40. So this, well, you would use a different club, right? Well, I'm going to take my 40 and again, Every situation is very different. Number one is you have to look at your lie. What kind of lie do you have? What, what's the lip like? Is it high or low? And how big, you know, what kind of green do you have to work with? It's a lot of, a lot of grass and so, but in this case, I'm just gonna 
pretend we have a big green, a lot of grass to work with, but I still have to get it. To Look out, guys. So I'm just going to hit it to that uh, okay. the frisbee golf thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a solid setup. Again, get down a little bit. Get your knees down, hands low. But I got my 48 club here. And I'm going to try and swing it just a little front of the ball. Shot. So do you do you hit down like a normal fairway shot? Do you try to pick it? I get stuck. I'm not a good player, but I try to pick it sometimes, and yeah, it doesn't well, work. Well, the thing is, when you try to pick it, sometimes you pick the ball, sometimes you pick the sand. <laughs> and that's the thing is, when it's so important to, first of all, not move laterally. Because when you move laterally, if you just stay right there, what happens is the club moves laterally. So sometimes you come in here, sometimes you come in here. I'm excited a little, but it's just, it's not consistent. So again, it's just trying to stand still with your lower body and rotate the upper body. But having, you know, 48 and not open it up too much, just you gotta practice it and try it. But I'm lucky here, there's no lip. I can hit it further and not have to worry about too much. And then fairway bunker shots? Fairway bunker shots, uh, yeah, so. Want to hit into the woods that way? Um, I'll, I'll hit into, i hit over there be perfect again got, buddy fairway shots are a little bit like the tee shots you know where the ball position is you know i would say not as forward so a little further back let's say you were on the tee with a you know on a part three but it's so important to have a solid setup i won't be sitting down here i don't want to have my hands below it's more of a regular setup but you don't want to use your legs because early on in my career when i was hitting these shots i was moving my legs too much and i hit too much sand and obviously when you hit a lot of sand you really don't get anywhere so now you want to make sure you hit a clean shot but you know don't worry about the lip if it's flat like this and just do your normal swing home back, run boom. and here is actually obviously if it's raining and it's packed it's a lot easier than again having a very fluffy Type of sand. So in the fluffy type sand, say your green side, um, not buried, but you know it's super fluffy. Any um, tip there? Do you swing a little harder? You mean if it's fluffy and you're just yeah, super fluffy sand. You gotta make sure that the ball you hit the ball clean. So if you're worried that you're gonna hit sand, move the ball position further back. Because the further back you come, the further back the ball is, it's easier coming cleaner to the ball. Because a lot of people, when the ball is here, you have a tendency to hit down in front of the ball. Mm. But if you have it here, it's almost like you're trying to hit a low shot. You know, hands are guiding it through, really to avoid hitting the sand. So I'm going to hit a shorter shot, but it'll be more like this, just punch. Shot. Okay. Very good. Well, thanks everybody for watching and joining in and the questions. It's always fun to share some of the knowledge and passion. And it's great to see all of you uh, during these tough times. So stay safe, see you next time. Shout out to the Poland girls golf team I think was joining. And um, also if you wanna check out Annika later, she's playing in a virtual celebrity type in quotes uh, golfer um, poker tournament online with MGM for charity. And uh, if you go to her Twitter handle, you can find out where to watch it.